All right then, hello and welcome to Southern College Optometry's January webinar on financial aid and budgeting. Happy New Year. We're very excited to have you all joining us. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. My name is Avery Cunningham. I am a student services and admissions officer here at SCO. I am one of the admissions team members who answers your questions and participates in the admissions process. Before we get started, I ask that we all use proper Zoom etiquette by keeping microphones muted unless speaking, limiting background noise, and respecting all of this webinar's attendees and facilitators. We will have time for questions towards the end of the webinar, but in the meantime, if you do have any questions or concerns that need immediate attention, please use your chat feature to communicate with us. Today, we'll be discussing financial aid and budgeting for optometry school and how you can make decisions while in school that will lessen the burden of loans once you're a practicing professional. Lachelle Hunt Davenport, the Interim Director of Financial Aid here at SCO, will give you a thorough overview of everything from applying for aid to utilizing resources to help balance your budget. This webinar is being recorded and will be free and available to view starting next week on our website. All righty, Ms. Hunt Davenport, um, whenever you're ready, we can go ahead and begin. Thank you, Ms. Avery. I appreciate that introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar today. Um, as has been stated, uh, if you have questions, just raise your hand or use the chat. I believe it, um, you were told to use the chat, uh, which Ms. Avery, I can't see the chat. So I'm assuming you're gonna be monitoring that. Um, yes, ma'am, I will monitor it. Okay, so having said that, um, let's just get into uh, the information. Again, my name is Lachelle Hunt Davenport, and I am the Interim uh, Director of Financial Aid for SCO. Also joining us is uh, Delrita Branch. She is uh, the Financial Aid Officer here in the Financial Aid Office, and you were introduced to her at your uh, invitational um, interview luncheon. So there's a picture of me. Okay, so we're going to get started. Uh, our agenda today um, is answering a few questions for you. How do you apply for aid at SCO? How much aid can you borrow per year at SCO? What type of aid do we offer? How and when will you receive your loan funds? And then we're going to talk a little bit about debt management. And after that, if you have questions, we will answer uh, those questions to the best of our ability. How do you apply for financial aid? So the financial aid office is gonna send you uh, an email. And the first, e the first thing you'll receive is what we call the FERPA form. That's the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. Um, that form um, allows you to tell us who we can release information on regarding uh, your status here at the school. Um, if you want your parents or a significant other uh, to know anything about your financial aid, you will have to complete that form. There's also the rights and responsibilities form, and it's just what it says is what the rights and responsibilities are um, in order for you to receive federal Title IV aid. Um, and then you can fax those forms uh, back to 901-722-3204. You can mail them or you can email them to the financial aid office at financialaid.seo.edu, excuse me. Also, um, if you do not have a federal student aid ID number, which we call FSA ID, you can apply for that at uh, www.studentaid.gov. You can also complete your FAFSA free application for federal student aid at the same website. In order to receive student loans, you must sign a master promissory note and uh, complete interest loan counseling. And again, all of that can be done at www.studentaid.gov. How much can you borrow? So that's determined by your budget and you cannot borrow more than your total budget but you must also look at the maximum amount and loans um, that you're able to borrow per year. So let's look at uh, some of your budget costs. Your tuition and the dollar amounts 
uh, that are being provided to you today are based on this current academic year, 21-22. We have not completed the budget for 22-23, but we're working on it. So currently, um, the non-regional, uh, which would be um, students who are not um, provided money from your state. And I think you guys remember uh, the PowerPoint presentation where Mr. Hauser talked to you about um, how tuition is calculated. So there's regional and non-regional. Um, there's also fees, which everyone pays the same amount. Books, same amount, $3,889. And as um, first year students, you also are required uh, to have health insurance. And so if you don't have health insurance with an outside entity, uh, that amount will be added to your budget. It's $2,524. So um, that's considered your living expenses budget. Uh, so your total budget, uh, non-regional, will be 58707 And again, these numbers are based on 2122. And for regional students, 38849 as a first year student, you only enroll eight months. Uh, you attend class the last uh, mini semester in July, uh, fall, and spring. So you have an eight month budget and we include $1,515 to your budget per month for living expenses. Now, when you complete the FAFSA, uh, if you qualify, and it's based on your expected family contribution, your EFC, uh, if you have what the government considers to be financial need, you will qualify for uh, the work study program. And again, this is a, our breakdown of your living expense budget. Um, we cover housing. Uh, if you live by yourself or you're single, um, you are allocated $740 a month uh, for housing. If you have a child, it's $1,040 a month. Uh, food, the allocation is $300 a month for a single person, $400 uh, for a student with children. Utilities um, averages $100 a month with children is $200. Transportation, $164 with children, 264. Personal expenses, uh, $250 a month. And same if you have a child. Um, so that total again is 1,554, uh, but it's a little bit more uh, for a family. So 2,154. Um, you must provide a copy of your lease by September 15th. So let's talk about loans. There, uh, basically, there's really four types of loans. We have three addressed here. Uh, you have the health professional student loan. Uh, that loan pays up to the cost of, the, of attendance. Uh, we don't really know exactly what the amount is, but we're anticipating 6,780. Uh, it rarely pays that much. Um, Darita, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so what was the cost of uh, H HPSL this year? Hold on one second. That cost, the amount of the award was 4641 this year. Okay, so, and it will probably be that same amount for 22-23. And the thing about the HPSL, uh, you must provide for rental income on your FAFSA in order to qualify uh, for this loan. You also have the direct uh, Stafford unsubsidized loan. As a first year student, you can qualify for up to $40,500 per year. And I strongly advise if you don't need that much, don't take it out. Uh, only borrow what you need because you will have to pay that money back at some point. There's also uh, the direct graduate plus loan, and you can borrow up to the cost of attendance for that. And it is a credit-based loan, so you must pass uh, 
uh, credit check. And so uh, let's say your um, budget was $60,500 and you received uh, the direct unsubsidized, um, but you didn't qualify for the health professional, uh, that would leave up to $20,000 uh, eligibility in the grad plus. If you qualify for the health professional as well and you receive that, then you would reduce that amount um, by the 60,000. Uh, students can also um, take out private loans, but again, you cannot exceed um, the cost of attendance. So your non-regional budget would be 58,000 if you were enrolled today, uh, $770 and the regional would be $39,058. But I wanna emphasize, um, these are, again, dollar amounts based on this current school year. So we talked about um, your total budget, um, and this is what the average award looks like for a student um, who receives an HPSL. We know that um, that 6780, is not what's uh, been paid uh, currently. Uh, then there's the unsub 40,500. And so that's what the average award would look like. Um, it could be more um, if you qualify for the grad plus or a private loan. What if you need more money? So the only way to borrow uh, more than your budget is to increase your budget. And the way you would increase your budget is through what's called a professional judgment. So you must have some extenuating circumstance um, that would require you to uh, have your budget increased. And let's talk about housing, for example. Let's say you had a roommate and your roommate uh, decided to move and you could not find another roommate. Uh, there is a possibility that your housing allowance could be increased because you lost your roommate. That's just an example. Um, the government allows certain items to be included in a budget. Um, if you needed a computer, uh, we could uh, include that in your budget. Um, again, housing is included. Um, There's certain things, uh, auto insurance, auto repairs, uh, medical expenses, computer, et cetera. Items that cannot be included in your budget would be auto payments. So uh, the regulations clearly say that you cannot buy a new car or make car payments uh, and have that included in your budget. You cannot pay credit card bills, uh, pet expenses. You can't buy your girlfriend uh, a wedding ring. Um, you can't buy bridal gowns et cetera. What are the different types of aid offered at SCL? So we talked about the health professional student loan. It has a 5% fixed interest rate, which means that interest rate is not gonna change. Uh, your grace period is 12 months. That means after you graduate, you have 12 months before you go into repayment. You are not accruing interest, interest on that loan until after the grace period up. Again, it's uh, need-based, which is why the parental income for uh, fiscal year 2020. So you're gonna use the tax information from uh, the year 2020 on the FAFSA. Um, SEO is the lender and the loan servicer is a company called Heartland ECSI. And if you're qualify for that loan and you apply for it, uh, we'll, we'll, we will do more counseling with you on that loan. Then there's the federal direct unsubsidized loan. Uh, the interest rate currently is 5.28%. Uh, it's a fixed interest rate. Uh, interest rates on federal loans change every July 1st. They may go up, they may go down. We won't know that until July 1st. It is an unsubsidized, meaning it is not need-based. Uh, your grace period is six months. Uh, that means six months after you graduate, uh, you go into repayment. And the origination fee is 1.057%. That origination fee um, comes out of your loan um, 
is deducted from each disbursement um, before the loan is dispersed to you. And the uh, origination fees change every October 1st. And again, we won't know. They did not change this year. So this is the same interest, I'm sorry, the origination fee uh, that we had for 2021. Uh, the Federal Direct Graduate Plus Loan, the interest rate is 6.28%, it's fixed. Uh, there is no grace period. Um, the origination fee is 4.228%, and you must be credit, work, credit worthy, meaning you must pass a credit check each time you request these forms, uh, funds. If you do not pass the credit check, uh, you may be able to get an endorser or um, most people refer to the in endorser as a co-signer. As you can see, there's a, uh, quite a difference in the interest rate as well as the origination fee. So I would encourage you to think long and hard um, as you ask for additional funds. And then we've mentioned work study. Um, you must be uh, eligible for the work study program, meaning you must demonstrate financial need through the FAFSA. Um, we offer part-time jobs on campus. Those jobs, the pay range is from 13 to $17 an hour. Dorita, is that correct? Yes, Michelle, that is correct. Okay. Again, they must be need-based. And I asked Delrita if that's correct because Delrita is our uh, work-study coordinator. She handles the work-study program. Uh, you will be paid monthly um, via direct deposit. And we offer community service positions with COVID. Um, most schools have received a waiver uh, whereby we are not placing students in community service right now until the pandemic um, is over. We don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, but those positions uh, pay $14 an hour, and they usually consist of off-campus tutoring. So for the most part, you would, uh, if whenever we go back into community service, we would be looking for students uh, who would be willing to tutor um, students in either elementary, middle school, and maybe even some high school programs. And it does not even have to be a school, maybe a community center, but um, some organization um, that offers tutoring. Other aid that's available um, would be veterans benefits. So if you are a veteran, you would need to go out to www uh, va.gov and see what benefits are available to you. Then we have service obligation programs. There are military scholarships that pay full tuition, books, and offer a monthly stipend. Again, you would um, look for that information at www.va.gov. There's the Indian Health Service Scholarship. Um, you have to qualify under that program. Um, and meet the criteria for the Indian scholarship, pays full tuition, books, uh, and a monthly stipend. And then the Arkansas loan um, is a loan forgiveness program. Uh, it pays $5,000 a year, and you must be a recipient of what we call the Arkansas contract seat. Um, and again, that was explained to you um, during the uh, financial aid and housing luncheon. Um, oh, same real, thing. Real, real quickly, um, just a quick reminder that we do have a mix here of students who have been accepted. Um, I'm sorry, Avery, have... but we can't hear you very well. Sorry, um, just to say that we do have a mix of students who have been accepted or applied, but we also have some students attending and who will view the presentation who have not applied yet. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And then there's the North Carolina um, Forgiveness Program. It pays $14,000 a year. And you must be a recipient of North Carolina, I'm sorry, a resident of North Carolina and have a 3.20 uh, cumulative GPA.
So here's some information um, that's helpful when you're filling out uh, the FAFSA. Um, so our school code is 003517. Um, that's critical because that is the only way we will get your financial information is if you put our school code on your FAFSA. Um, your total budget um, equals the EFC expected family contribution. Um, it's the EFC uh, minus your financial need. And that's the amount of uh, need-based aid you're eligible to receive. Uh, FAFSA tells us what your expected family contribution is. Uh, this slide says it's usually zero for unmarried couples, but again, that's based on your if you work and your income. Uh, if you have no income, then it most certainly will be a zero. Also, if you were born, not born in the U.S., and you have what's typically considered a green card, then you must uh, place your alien registration number in your FAFSA. And you are strongly, strongly encouraged to use the IRS data retrieval tool to upload tax information to FAFSA. Uh, the Department of Education wants the information that was submitted to the Internal Revenue. And that occurs when you use the data retrieval tool. Um, and again, include your parents' income if you're interested in the health professional student loan. Um, Ms. Avery, I see a, a question in the chat. Do you wanna stop and see what that is or you want me to keep going? Um, if we could please all save questions for the end, that okay. would be wonderful. Um, unless anybody has an emergency, then, then we'll save questions for the end. Okay, thank you. How and when will you receive your money? Um, first of all, you will receive your award information via email. You will be instructed to accept your awards online through a system called NetPartner, which is our student portal. On NetPartner, uh, first of all, the school is not allowed to accept uh, awards for you. Um, and that is also where you will see um, all of your financial aid information. Once your loans are accepted, the financial aid office will send your loan to your loan servicer. Uh, and the, the funds will be dispersed to the school 10 days prior to registration each semester. Once our accounting office has credited the funds to your uh, account, they will be transmitted to your checking account on file but that will not happen before the first day of each semester. So um, this slide talks about what you need to know. So if you are interested in becoming a work study student, you must bring a copy of your social security card to the financial aid office. If you want to see the loan balance on all federal loans, and that would include your undergraduate loans, you would go to www.nslds, that's the National Student Loan Database System, uh, .ed.gov, and that will give you the entire history of all the loans you've ever um, borrowed. Um, if you are going to live in an apartment, um, you will need to, um, they will need your accept your award letter as proof and you will get that from net partner um and here's your net partner login uh, your login is your social security number and you may request a password through net partner and um, any missing information documents etc that the financial aid office requires you will receive an email once you have been awarded and you will accept the declined awards that have been offered, but anything that's missing, you will also see it on NetPartner as well. Uh, here's our contact information. Uh, there's my phone number and email. There's Darita's phone number and email. And this is the 800 number for the office, the local number, our fax, and our email. 
address. So let's talk about budgeting for a minute. Um, just as a reminder, um, you will need to look at your budget uh, for ways to lower your costs for the months not included in your first year's budget. And those months are May, June, and half of July. And we have provided uh, a link uh, to a uh, site. It's a budgeting app, and it will help you set up a budget, and it's free. Um, so this is a good saying here. A budget is like a compass. It guides your money decisions. And you might also want to read um, this article, Five Mistakes You Can't Afford to Make in College. So some things that you can consider uh, for your first year budget, uh, your rent, roommates can help keep, your, keep you under your budget. Um, and if you recall from the uh, luncheon, um, we have a whole um, presentation on housing. And the housing that's shown to you uh, during that presentation uh, is within your budget. Um, but typically, you know, you need a, a roommate to help you stay under your budget. Um, just some uh, recommendations. Drink a lot of water. I'm talking about food. Cook and prepare your meals. Um, this is an interesting fact. Just drinking water instead of soft drinks can save you four to five dollars a day or $135 to $150 a month. Um, utilities, no cable, just internet and Netflix. Um, and again, these are recommendations. Um, you know, no one's telling you you can't have cable. Um, and that's the choice you make for yourself. Travel, um, carpool where you can. Um, Try to get one of those uh, fuel cars, gas cars from Progress. Um, and you know, you accumulate fuel points and you can have a discount on your gas. Um, so use apps to reduce costs on purchases for food, entertainment, etc. Some additional recommended apps include um, um, Groupon. You can get um, coupons for oil changes, entertainment, clothing. Uh, there's an app called Get My Perks. Uh, it has local specials on a variety of items. Uh, Retail Me Not, that you can get uh, discounts for Starbucks, Targeting, Target, and other clothing venues. Uh, Shopkick is another retail, Target, Macy's, Best Buy. Gas Buddy, I use personally Gas Buddy all the time. Uh, I price uh, around the area I live in to determine who has the lowest uh, gas rates at the time. So Gas Buddy, uh, I love Gas Buddy and I use it often. Uh, Vigolink, uh, this is for TV users. Uh, there's uh, Living Social. Um, this provides um, information on events in your area. You can also see that if you're a Facebook user, um, there's an events in your area function on Facebook. Gamefly, uh, something um, if you don't want to forget games, um, or basically we're saying we did not want to forget uh, gamers. Sorry about that. But Gamefly is an app for gamers. Um, join Honey. Um, this is an automatic coupon extension. And I'm not very familiar with uh, Join Honey, uh, but maybe um, Miss Avery can tell us something about that at the end. And of course, GoodRx. Um, GoodRx uh, is an app to find cheaper uh, medication prescriptions. Uh, sometimes it's cheaper than using your insurance. And as always, you still need to make sure you control spending even when using apps. Every dollar adds up, so the less you spend, the less you borrow. Some other budgeting tips. Talk to second and third year students. Uh, they have the wisdom um, of trial and error. Uh, be careful with impulse purchases. Um, 
you know, during uh, COVID, a lot of us have shopped at Amazon and Amazon is great, but you still need to wait sometimes overnight to be sure of your decision. Um, you may decide you want something today and tomorrow decide I can live without that. Ways to avoid busy and excess spending, uh, streamlining, exercise, free local events, um, free virtual events, volunteer opportunities, discount tickets to museums, um, the zoo, et cetera. In the city of Memphis, uh, there are certain days uh, that you can go to the zoo free, you can go to the museums free. So um, keep that in mind um, if your schedule allows. Um, so remember to tell your money, to tell your money where to go because you are in control. The money is not in control, you are. At this point, um, we're gonna open it up for questions, uh, but I did wanna show the last slide and just tell you the next session will be a diversity and inclusion session at SCO and it's scheduled for February 23rd at three o'clock PM. And um, there's a link to it, an inquiry form. And I'm sure uh, Ms. Avery can give you more information on that. So at this point, uh, we're open for questions. All right, and everyone, um, please use the chat feature and ensure that you share it with everyone so we can all see and be sure to field questions. There's also a Q&A feature that you'll see at the bottom of your screen that you can use to ask questions. Um, and we'll be sure to get to any inquiries that you may have at this point. Okay, that was a quest. That was something for me. Sorry. So, Avery, do you see any um, questions? I do actually, and I, I I would like your feedback on perhaps working part time um, in other institutions outside of SEO. I did meet a current student this over the weekend who has a part time job, and I know we don't always encourage students to pursue those um, because of the scheduling. But I was curious to know from the financial aid perspective, would they recommend students look into additional part time work outside of SEO? Well. So what we would encourage um, is to use uh, our federal work study program and you can work part time. In fact, um, because we have uh, so few students, uh, I think our student population is around 540 students. Um, we are required to spend all the money that's allocated to the school under the work study program. So a lot of students will work more than one job. Uh, some students have two or three jobs. And so rather than working off campus, um, you know, we need to spend the work study money. And if you as a student need a job, uh, we can help each other. So I would recommend uh, rather than working off campus part time, pick up a work study position on campus. Did that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's see. Any other questions from our attendees? Again, please feel free to use your chat feature or use the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. And I suppose I also have another question for those students who have not yet applied for Resio or optometry school who may just now be showing an interest in the field, would they be able to reach out to our financial aid department if they have any questions regarding loans, um, especially if this will be their first time taking out a loan for their education? Absolutely. And uh, let me apologize because I assume uh, that everyone on the um, webinar are on this Zoom had already applied for uh, admissions and had attended um, our interview sessions. So I apologize for that. That was a mistake on my part, but absolutely um, students uh, can, potential students can reach out to myself or Del Rita 
uh, and we will get right back to you and answer your questions to the best of our ability. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and then Ms. Branch, do you have anything else to add before we um, put in one more request for questions and close out? No, I do not. Okay, wonderful. Um, well, thank you all so much. This brings us to the end of our webinar. I know we have covered a lot of information um, this afternoon or this morning for some of us. Um, and I hope this experience has been of assistance to all of you as you start on your optometric journey. We did have, a, have an update with the um, um, date for our next se session. It will be a diversity and inclusion at SEO session, but the date is now February 16th. The time will be the same, 3 p.m. Central Time. Um, and this will feature our coordinator for diversity and inclusion and representatives from NOSA, Gemma Omicron, and Spectrum, which are all student organizations representing um, diversity within the field, um, women's representation within the field, and um, LGBTQ plus representation within the field. And they'll all be talking on a panel about their own experiences as underrepresented minorities, not only at SEO, but as those pursuing optometry in general, their own experiences and also their hopes for the future and words of encouragement and inspiration for students who may not feel or see themselves represented currently in the optometric field. The registration link for this webinar is live on our website, and so please feel free to, to log in and sign up at any time. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to request more information by signing up for our inquiry form. Um, if you do that, you will receive a personal advisor and a personal brochure with information relevant to your goals and experiences. Thank you so much, Ms. Ms. Hunt Davenport and Ms. Branch for sharing your time and experiences, and a special thank you for all of our attendees who joined us live and those of you who may be watching this um, after the fact. We hope to see you all at the next webinar in February, but in the meantime, have a great rest of your week and take care. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.